best way I found to do this is setting a couple of bad cells underneath the block so it can set level and start stacking them in there one by one with the negative side on one end and all the positives on the other end. So something that threw me off the first few times I've done this is after you've charged and discharged all these cells, you're going to notice when you're trying to build the block back and you have all 28 cells in here, that your last few cells just don't look like they're going to fit in here, if that makes sense, because it's sticking out too much. So you can imagine, you've got this much extra space. What I've done is I'll take these longer bolts and fit in here and bolt it on, tighten it down about one block's worth and leave it for 12 hours and then I'll tighten it down another block's worth. So as you can see with this just bolted up you can put some uh, nuts on here and use some longer bolts or if you just only have the factory style bolt you're not going to be able to reach that far because you can see this block after it's been charged and discharged has swelled enough to where it's about a block and a half's worth of swell so rather than try and use these bolts and cram them all the way in there I just have some longer bolts and I'll crank it down about a block's worth which seems a little bit strange to press out all that swell but I think Toyota designed this in a way so that it keeps the batteries from swelling they can continuously charge and discharge without swelling the gas will build pressure inside of these and then it'll retract upon discharge. So really essentially all you're doing inside the block when you're squishing the battery back together is you're just pressing this plate which as you can kind of tell, let me see if I can get a better picture of this. Oh this one's dried out. But the material in between these plates is just compressing a little bit. So the metal itself is not actually coming in contact with one another, it's just collapsing the plate a little bit, if that makes sense. So you won't have any more added resistance for charging and discharging. And I've done this a few times before and after rebuilding my brother's Prius, it held out another six or seven years, I think. So all the positives are lined up on one end, all my negatives are lined up on this end. We're going to balance this battery, and the way I'm found to do it, you can do it however you want, I guess. You could put a piece of welding wire across this whole thing, or it doesn't take very long. Just take some safety wire and just wrap it around each one, like so. And then you can just put your nuts on there. Don't go terribly tight. Just tighten it until it's slightly flush there. And I found this is safe to do because you're using safety wire. That will help balance out the cells and you think, well that's not enough wire, it needs to be thicker, it needs to be a plate. No, you're only talking, you know, seven volts, seven volts per cell. I mean, seven volts can flow easily through a solid steel wire. I mean, you crank that much through these little stranded wires. Then you'll just spin the battery around and do the same thing on the opposite side. So this is the point where I would probably go ahead and put some gloves on. Only because while you're doing this, you're, you're bringing in quite a bit of current across here. And when I was doing this, I noticed it got a little bit warm. Um, you know, not bad, but it wasn't very comfortable. Kind of like, you know, maybe when you're a kid and you lick a 9-volt battery and you're like, oh, that wasn't very fun. It's kind of like that. So I would recommend putting some gloves on. 
everything is run in parallel. All my positives are run together. All my negatives are run together. And just a little history lesson in electricity. If you run both of your batteries together, both positives together, both negatives together, and you run this in parallel, you're going to just essentially take the voltage will still be the same. It'll still be 7 volts, but what you're going to do is you're going to double the amperage. Now if you run this in series and you run your negative to positive, you'll end up doubling your voltage so it'll be 14.4 14.4 volts but your amperage still stays the same so it'd be the same as one battery you just double the voltage in this case over here you're only gonna have 7.2 volts I know I did that backwards but hey I'm also left-handed so anyways 7.2 volts but you're gonna double your amperage so what, we're, what we've done here is this is just going to be like roughly seven and a half, eight volts. But we've just multiplied this amperage by 28. So can you imagine the amount of power coming off this wire and coming off of this wire? Like if I were to touch these two wires together, oh my goodness. It would literally just blow this thing to kingdom come. It would be like taking a whole bunch of these 12 volt batteries and wiring them all up together. And then let's see what they do when I touch the two together. Should I do it? I mean, this is a small wire. It's not that. You're crazy. Don't you dare. Don't you dare do that. It's going to like weld these two together. It's going to blow up an arc. Oh my goodness. I'm kind of scared because this is... This is going to be crazy. Oh my gosh. I don't know if anybody's ever done this before. But let's just barely let's just barely touch it and see what happens, okay? Ready? Set. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm just kidding. Nothing. See, look. It's just safety wire stuffed out of the way. But if I took this wire and I ran it over here and we touched these two together, now we're talking. Should we try it? But in all seriousness, I'm going to cut these wires off so that there's no chance they accidentally touch, because if they did, it probably would blow something to Kingdom Come or weld this thing shut. That way the kids don't get over here and accidentally mess around and touch those two together.